Greeting Captains and welcome to this Explain 10 video. Today we're going to be doing a basic tutorial for those of you who are transitioning from uh, a Boeing to an Airbus. Now, fundamentally, uh, flying uh, jetliners is, uh, you know, in some way it is very similar, but uh, there are some uh, fundamental differences in the way you operate uh, the aircraft from an instrument perspective. For the purpose of uh, our flight today, we're going to be flying Alitalia uh, from Nice, France to Leonardo da Vinci Airport in Rome, Italy. We're going to be doing a full eyeless approach uh, with Autoland uh, so that I can expose the systems of this uh, beautiful aircraft. So, captains, without further ado, let us uh, go ahead and jump into the flight deck and get familiarized with the Airbus flight deck. Welcome to the flight deck, captains. We will begin by taking a look at the uh, fundamental differences between an Airbus and a Boeing, and we will start with the overhead panel. This is your Adir's uh, sort of section right over here. Uh, you've got, uh, let's move over here, uh, you have your fuel pumps right over here, your bus tie right here, batteries, those two buttons over there. Uh, you've got your APU and APU start button here. This is the APU bleed. Temperature control knobs right over here for your flight deck and the cabin. Your exterior lights are over here. Passenger signs down here. This is the emergency light uh, switch. So, all in all, you find the same components uh, in an Airbus, the same components that you would find on on a Boeing, they are just placed in a, in a different uh, different place. If we may move down here to the glare shield, uh, this is uh, where you will control the aircraft uh, while in flight, uh, your autopilot and uh, LNAV and VNAV. Uh, and there is a, a fundamental difference between an Airbus and a Boeing in terms of LNAV and VNAV. So the heading selector, this is the heading selector knob, and it also is your uh, LNAV, and this is the speed selector in an Airbus, and uh, this is uh, VNAV. Now, the way you engage uh, VNAV is by clicking uh, in and out. Uh, this will engage either speed select or uh, VNAV. And the same thing with the heading uh, knob is if you click it this way or you pull it out, you would engage or disengage um, LNAV. Another fundamental difference uh, between a Boeing and uh, an Airbus is the way you engage the auto throttle. In Boeing, you normally switch on the auto throttle. There is a button right about here, switch, you flip it uh, up, and then you will arm uh, the auto throttle. In an Airbus, this button act, acts as the auto throttle. Uh, but the way you engage, uh, engage it is, is a little bit different. And this is the uh, thrust lever, and this is now maximum thrust. So in order to engage the um, auto throttle, is you move it once until you hear the first click, and then the second, you hear the second click, and that's climb thrust, and this is where auto throttle will be engaged. And it will remain in this uh, the auto throttle will remain engaged unless you deactivate it by clicking the button here or by changing the thrust lever um, setting. Whether you go down or you go back up, you will disengage the auto throttle. All right. And while we take off uh, during this flight, you'll be able to hear uh, those two clicks, and that will indicate that the thrust lever has been moved to climb thrust and the auto throttle would be engaged at that point. Okay, so these, this is the uh, speed brake uh, lever, this is the flaps lever, as uh, parking brake, and this is everything, this cockpit door uh, lock right here. So this is pretty much um, everything that we need to know for this flight uh, in terms of the basic differences uh, in where the instrument panel uh, knobs and switches are positioned. As we go uh, throughout the flight, I will point uh, out differences in uh, flying the aircraft, uh, again, from an instrument perspective. 
So let's go ahead and power up this aircraft and let's load our flight plan, take a look at our charts, and then we will depart uh, Nice uh, to Italy. Okay, so first thing first, uh, batteries can go on. And today for our flight, uh, let's see here. We need, uh, the release fuel is 4,781 kilos. This is, I believe, in kilos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to include 5.5, and let's say refuel. All right, and we'll get to the flight plan in a minute. Okay, let's start the fuel pumps. All right, all fuel pumps are on. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this right before. Okay, so the temperatures are set for both the flight deck and the cabin. All right, let's uh, zoom in, let's start the APU. Okay, APU is now starting. By the way, the scenery that I'm using for Nice is available at the Future Game Shop. I will provide you, of course, as always, with the link uh, to the airport in the description section of the video. Okay, APO is coming up now. All right, APU is now available. Yep. All right, let's uh, go ahead and start the APU bleed and turn the packs on so that people don't burn in the back. Okay. And again, this is the same thing. You need to uh, set the adheres to nav mode, just like you would in a Boeing. That right, goes on nav. On bat is gone. And the final one on nav again. And let's put this on STS. And enter. Okay, so now the uh, adheres will align. Uh, alignment in seven minutes. Okay. A few more things actually we need to do here before we move on. APU bleed is on. I believe those fine. Passenger signs are on. Non smoking signs on. And we'll arm the emergency lights. Okay, and let's turn the lights on so we can see the overhead panel. All right, perfect. Now, just uh, folks, one quick note uh, on, I, I've started, of course, the APU, but uh, normally pilots prefer to use external power if it's available, uh, simply because um, fuel is very expensive, so they can actually save some, some fuel uh, using external power, and they don't normally start the APU uh, right until before um, engine start. So, we are good here. Let's go ahead. Looks like the uh, adheres have aligned. Let's go ahead and set things up here in the MCDU. So, zero fuel is set. Block fuel is set. And now we can go to uh, our uh, initialization. I have a company route uh, saved already from EFAS, so we're going to go ahead and enter it here. Uh, Lima Foxtrot Mike November to Lima India Romeo Foxtrot is our flight route today. And today we are Alitalia flight uh, 25. Four. That sounds good to me. And the cost index for this flight is 65. And we are going to be flying at a final cruise altitude today of 28,000 feet. And now we click on Align IRS. All right, now there's a nice little gadget in an Airbus, uh, which is the METAR information. So if we update this now, we will get the uh, the METAR information for uh, Nice, uh, as you can see, this is the current time in Zulu. Uh, this is the wind, uh, so we've got uh, 110, 40 knots uh, wind at 110 degrees, 
and then we've got a few clouds at 4000, temperature is 26 Celsius, the Q&H is uh, 1019. Okay, so let's set the altimeter to 1019. And what else? Uh, okay, so let's go back here and now set the flight plan. Now, setting the flight plan is a little different from a Boeing. In a Boeing, uh, you will find a departure and arrival button here in the uh, FMC. You don't have this in, uh, in an Airbus. What you see, in order to select the arrival uh, and departure, you would go to the um, departing airport, which is in this case LFMN, and you click here, and then you select the departure. So today we're going to be departing runway 22 right, right there, and let's check our uh, SID, Solder 6 Yankee, okay, that's the one right there. And we click on back to the flight plan, insert, and now you have your departing runway in the flight plan. As you can see, this has changed right over here as well. And we do the same thing for the arrival. So we click on the arrival airport, which is in this case Leonardo da Vinci. And let's take a look here 16 rights through the Gilly 4 Bravo. Okay, 16. ILS 16. All right, where is it? 16, right. That's the one. Really, for Bravo is our. And then we return flight plan and insert and now we should have our arrival runway as well that's our top of climb right there that's top of descent perfect there are no discontinuities perfect another thing I don't like about uh, the MCDU is that you have to manually go if you click on flight plan it doesn't take you to uh, to the position that you're at so you know maybe it's just uh, something that is uh, indigenous to the jar design i'm not sure if they're a real airbus uh, mcdu behaves in this way but uh, anyway all right let's turn our radios on and let's go to performance now in performance there are a few things that are quite different in uh, in an Airbus, let's set this up. Transition altitude is 5,000. Now the way you set the flaps here is, we're gonna do flaps one today. So, um, there we go, I think that should do it. There we go, flaps one, and flex temperature. And voila. So we are now uh, done with programming the MCDU. As you can see, it's, it's a little different, but the same information uh, you need in an Airbus uh, as you would need in a Boeing. You need your V1s, you need your flap settings, your trim. Uh, this is something that you need also to set, uh, which is a flex temperature in, in an Airbus. All right, uh, at this point, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to actually um, push back and start our engines. Let's set our altitude to 28,000 feet. Oops. All right, that's 28,000 feet. And we are good to uh, call the pushback truck and start our engines. Let's turn the lights a bit here. 
There we go. Much better. Okay. Let's go ahead and dismiss ground services and call the pushback truck. All right, captains, uh, let's go ahead and turn our beacon lights on. What's going on here? All right, so pushback truck is in place. Uh, we're pushing back. Let's go ahead and starting engine two. Start engine number two. Okay, and that's good enough. Let's stop here and dismiss. Park brake off. Park brake on. All right. Let's start engine number one. Starting engine one. Right, and engine number two, engine number one, figure pardon, is now being stabilized. Very good stuff. Okay, so we can we can set the uh, engine mode selector now to off, and everything here is fine. All right. Okay, so we need to auto brake on max. Spoilers, let's spoilers arm. Arm the spoilers, flaps, flaps, flaps one. one. For takeoff, and we click here on two config. Yep, no blues, so we are ready for uh, taxi now. Let's go ahead and turn the taxi lights on. Nav lights and logo can go on. And that's it, we're good to taxi now to runway two to right so let's release the parking brake and get going park brake off park brake off and let's go Stop right over here. Okay, park brake on. Set the parking brake. All right, we can turn off the APU and APU bleed. Our packs are on. Strokes can go on. Beacon is on. Uh, wing, nah, it's fine. Nas, taxi off. Landing lights on, runway turn off lights on, and everything else appears to be okay. There are no blues, everything's set. We'll set the clock as well. Alright, park brake off. We are ready for a departure now. And by the way, at this point, LNAV and VNAV Approaching are set. Two, two, right. On runway, two, two, right. All right, let's get uh, lined up here. All right, let's go. Power set. One hundred knots. B one, rotate. Rotate. Gear up, gear up. Speed check, flaps zero.
captains, so uh, we'll go ahead now and fly for us. And we will autopilot reach one autopilot. Jack. And as you can see now, the aircraft is uh, flying on the flight plan uh, route that we've set in the MCDU. Okay, we don't no longer need the spoilers disarmed. So we disarmed the spoilers. Everything's fine over there. And we are coming on to our transition altitude. Okay, let's set the barrow reference to standard. Standard barrow crosscheck. Passing flight level zero, 050. Zero. And at this point, by the way, folks, uh, TCAX is on standby. And as this is a, uh, you know, not an ATC flight, but this is how you... Let me zoom in here so you can see. This is where you set this to auto, and then you set this to TARA, and you're pretty much done. So at this point, the after uh, takeoff checklist would be complete. Uh, gear is up, flaps are up, packs are on, uh, barrel reference is set. Uh, so uh, after takeoff checklist is now complete. Uh, we are now at 250 knots as we are still below 10,000 feet. Uh, as soon as we are above 10,000 feet, we'll be able to uh, increase our speed. Landing lights are on. Okay, everything looks okay to me at the moment. Okay, Captain, so uh, we continue our climb to our final uh, altitude of 280, and everything is uh, okay at the moment. As you can see now, the thrust lever is at uh, climb thrust, and the auto throttle was engaged automatically uh, when, when, we, uh, when we put the thrust lever in this position. This is one of the big differences between uh, how you would engage auto throttle in Airbus as opposed to a uh, Boeing. Alright, so I'll let you guys uh, enjoy the flight and uh, right before we come back, let's uh, actually take a look at our charts uh, for our approach into uh, Leonardo da Vinci Airport. Okay, Captains, this is... Uh this is the chart that uh, we need to look at. This is our star. Basically, we're going to be coming here from Gilio, um, Tango Alpha Quebec. Uh, so this is where we're going to be coming from. And then we're going to come and land here. So we're, this is uh, 16 right. Okay, so this, this is our star. This is a uh, bigger part here. This is where we're going to be coming from. Okay, and we'll be coming to here to land. So let's take a look at the um, ILS uh, 16 right, which is this one right over here. Okay, so this is the chart for our runway. This is where we're going to be coming from. Okay, and then we're going to basically intercept the localizer to to land runway 16 right. If we look here, it says that from Tango Alpha Quebec, we need to be at 4,000. Uh, and from Charlie Mike Papa, we need to be at 2,500. Okay, we'll bear that in mind. Hopefully, we'll remember that as we uh, approach uh, uh, approach Rome. Okay, captains, enjoy the flight. I'll see you at uh, flight level 280. Captains, uh, we continue our climb to uh, flight level 280. As you can see, we are experiencing uh, just a slight turbulence. And I want to show you a trick. Uh, this can get really uh, annoying when uh, when you're trying to look at your plan or set some values and the aircraft keeps shaking. Now, if you're using head shake like I do and X camera, there is a nice way to disable this without disabling a head shake. So you can go back and forth. And what I have is I have one button that enables X camera and another button that disables X camera. So for the views, so let me enable X camera, and if, for example, I go down 
let's say, right over here, and I want to disable head shake for this particular position. So this is what you do. You go into X camera and control panel, and for this particular view, you either enable head shake, you see how it's shaking now, okay, or you disable head shake, and you will get rid of the, uh, the head shake feature uh, for this particular view, which will help you, um, which will help you, uh, you know, set your values or descent or do whatever that you need to do. Okay. So we continue to climb. Uh, everything looks normal. And by the way, I am uh, on X-Plane 10.5 uh, Release Candidate 3. And this means that now I have Global Winds Aloft, which is the forecast for upper wind data. And this is one of the big improvements in... Uh, this is one of the big improvements in, uh, in X-Plane 10.5. It gives you the uh, global winds aloft, uh, which is great. Uh, this means that you, we no longer need FS Global Weather. We don't need uh, NOAA Weather Plugin. We simply, uh, you simply need X-Plane Real Weather to be enabled, which is now built in in X-Plane. All right, folks, uh, I'll see you uh, right before our top of descent. Uh, until then, enjoy the flight. Relax, kick back. I will see you shortly. Enjoy the flight. All right, so we are now uh, getting closer to top of descent. This is our top of descent mark right over there. And this is another difference between a Boeing FMC and an Airbus MCDU. Uh, in a Boeing FMC, you would see an abbreviation of TC and TD, meaning top of climb and top of descent. In an Airbus uh, MCDU, you would simply see uh, those two marks. Let's see here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. You see these marks for uh, TC and uh, TD. So we're getting close. Let's go ahead and set things up for our arrival. So arrival airport is Lima India uh, Romeo Foxtrot. Let's go ahead and go to the performance. And from performance, we'll go to approach. We'll set the QNH to 1018. 1018 temperature is 28 Celsius and we have 7 knots wind at 340 degrees so 340 and 7 knots VAP is calculated automatically for you in an Airbus so you don't have to enter it and we're going to do landing conferences at uh, full uh, sorry, landing configuration is full. We're going to do flaps full, and our final approach speed would be 138. Okay, so we are now at uh, still cruising, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our flight plan. See, again, a difference between Airbus and, uh, and a Boeing um, MCDU is that uh, once you clear a waypoint or an airway in a Boeing, the FMC would automatically uh, remove that line. In, in uh, the MCDU, you have to physically click the button so that this one is the first one that appears. Okay, so let's take a look here. And the final altitude that we need to be at confirms with, uh, conforms with the uh, with our charts, so we need to be at 2,500 feet. And since there is no ATC, I'm going to go ahead and reduce this to 2,500. Transition altitude would be 6,000. We are now close to top of descent. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and let's let's check one thing here real quick. To go back, we are here. And cruise. All right, I think we're close enough. I'm going to go ahead and begin our descent now. 
and to begin the descent you simply click right here. We are close to top of descent, sir. Alright, and now we've begun our descent. And we're going to descend all the way to 2,500 feet. Alright, let's take a quick look here at our plan just to make sure everything's okay. So, we are at top of descent. Uh, we need to... We're about 4,000. Yeah, I think we should be fine. Alright, captains, uh, as we make our turn now, we need to reduce our speed uh, to 250 knots. Let's take a look here. Yes. So let's go ahead and disengage VNAV and now we'll reduce our speed to 250 and what I'll do is I will extend the spoilers arm, spoilers disarm, spoilers half, spoilers full. I'll extend the uh, speed brakes to help us reduce our speed quicker to 250 knots. Brakes now. And we'll continue our descent to 2500 feet. Let's take a quick look here at our plan. Uh, so we are, we need to be at uh, 10,900, which I think we should be fine. Yeah, I think we should be fine. And then right over here, we need to reduce our speed to about 190 knots. But all is well at the moment. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the ILS button. And what this does is that it puts the frequency for you. And once we're close enough, it's actually going to display the distance to the runway. Okay, as we approach 10,000 feet, uh, we need to turn on our lights. Right, that's good enough. Let's turn our lights on. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and reduce our speed now to 205. All right, so 6,000 feet, so we need to set the altimeter. Let me find out what the altimeter is. 1018. Oops, okay. There we go, 1018. Let's go ahead and reduce our speed now to 190. And flaps speed one. Check. Flaps one. Okay, captains, uh, as you can see now, we have the distance to the runway. And it looks like the localizer is active. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the approach button and. Autopilot 2. Autopilot 2. And we're going to reduce our speed now to 170 knots. Okay, and flaps speed two. Check. Flaps two. Okay, let's take a quick look at our final 
speed. Let's see here. Um, okay. Performance. Approach 137. Okay, that's the runway, as you can see. And that's right, that's 16 right, so that's where we're gonna land. So what I'll do is I will reduce speed to 160 knots now. And this is going to be a cat three phase activated. All right. Looks like there is some strong wind uh, here as we approach Rome. Alright, we need to put auto brake on medium for landing. Let's make sure that the speed brakes are armed. Grand spoilers are armed, yes. Alright, and at this point I will reduce our speed to 155, 150. Okay, and speed check, flaps 3. Flaps 3. Alright, and gear down. Gear down. Light slope is active. Let's reduce our speed to final approach speed, 137. Flaps speed full. check, flaps full. Radio altimeter alive. are all configured now for auto land captains uh, so the aircraft should land itself on the runway 1000 approaching 1 6 right all right here we go We're less than uh, 400 feet from the runway now. Land green checked. Breathing. Hundred above. One hundred. Long Retard. landing. Long landing. Ground spoilers. This out. Okay. Reverse green. Thrusters are out. Manual brake. 70 knots. And welcome to Leonardo da Vinci Airport, Captains. Exit the runway right over here.
right, captains. Uh, our landing was a pretty good landing. Uh, we can turn off the strobes, and we can turn off all these lights, and turn on the taxi light. And let's go ahead and taxi to the gate. I'm not very familiar with uh, with the airport. I think this is my very first landing into Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I'm sure we can find an empty spot somewhere there. Okay, let's... Uh, Spoilers arm. Spoilers disarm. I can see the, uh, the gates right over there. Hey, watch it. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can uh, probably park right over the here, right over there, right up front. Captains, this brings us to the conclusion of our video today. I certainly hope that it has been a useful and informative video, especially for those of you who are transitioning from a Boeing to an Airbus. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't entered the IXE G737 giveaway, the link to the giveaway is provided in the description section of this video. Folks, until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.